What's good, YouTube? What, 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 what's good, YouTube? It's your boy, Pro Winston here. Um, as most of y'all requested, y'all know that I got the connections. I got Billy Break on video. What's good, Billy? How you doing? I'm um, doing good, you know. I'm just about to book my flight to Brighton and just chilling, you know. All right, and like I told you, I will be there with you, so hopefully, if y'all don't mind, we can all chill. Um, Billy Break, I don't know if you noticed, but... A lot of people have been liking the, the little thing that I started on YouTube, and you're one of the most requested names. So, I want you to introduce yourself as well. I don't even need you to introduce yourself, because everyone knows who the fuck you are. But where, but, but where are you from? Where in Texas? Um, I'm from a small town called Saxe. Uh -huh. it's, it's like 30 minutes north of Dallas, but basically Dallas, Texas. All right, all right. And um, how long have you been playing this game? Um, off and on, basically since I was 12. But, I mean, I've quit a couple times in between, but yeah, since I was just a little kid, whenever, like, the starter decks came out. All right, all right. And um, you was playing back when there was, like, no ban list, I'm assuming, correct? Oh, yeah. Yeah, how, first regionals and first nationals, yeah. How do you feel about the format then and the format now? Minus um, the fact that you won back-to-back, -back, BB. <laughs> I, mean, I did well back then when I was a little kid. Like at the first nationals in uh, Ohio at Origins, I got I went I lost the very first round, and then I lost the very last round to Sang Bui, and then I am getting like 16th or 18th. Mm -hmm. But I was like 14 years old, so obviously like now that I'm older, I have more of appreciation for the game because I feel like I can understand it a lot more than when I was younger. But I definitely think the game is better now than it was before, like pre ban list. But I mean, there's that, that period in, bet in between, like the first ban list. The game was really good too, but I mean, I think the game is pretty good right now. I mean, obviously, Blackluster Soldier, like, there's no point in having that card around, but um, the game's still skillful to a degree. I don't think it's as non-skillful as like in Dale's video. Like, I agree with Dale on a lot of the stuff he said in his video, but I don't think it's to the point where there's so many power cards that you can't predict what your opponent's going to do. I mean, obviously, if they open up with the nuts, there's nothing you can do, but it's you guys always had that degree. Even in sure? the sorcerer format, because because I was playing during that time also, but I wasn't a top player like y'all, and I never understood why there was cards like Mirage and Nightmare out, Chaos Dragon, <laughs> Yada Garatu. Like, yeah. why were those cards even good? Explain real quick. Oh, why they were good? I thought yeah. you were saying because they're too broken. Mirage yeah. and Nightmare. <laughs> oh my gosh, Mirage and Nightmare was one of my favorite cards back then. It was just it's too good. Like Mirage and Nightmare, you get a plus three. You, I mean, you, obviously you take the risk if you don't draw... Worst case, you don't draw your one of your three Mystical Space Typhoons, and you just lose whatever you just drew. So, I mean, you have cards like Serpent and stuff that would be able to come back, and it, it just was too good. Card Yada ends the game. Any card that you can just summon and end the game, just by summoning, like, that shouldn't be around. All right, all right. And um, now, I just wonder, how many tops do you have? Can you count on your fingers, or what? <laughs> Um, I can count on my fingers and like on my toe. Oh shit! All right. So how much is that? I, I'm at eleven right now with two wins. Uh, eleven tops and two yeah. championships. Yep, I think that's what it is. Yep. All right. And um, what do you think about all this controversy about you almost surpassing Ryan? Hmm. Uh, what do you mean, the Hayakawa? Yes. Oh, when if I won three in a row? Yeah. Like, how <laughs> would, would you have felt? I would have felt great, but I mean, the Yu-Gi-Oh gods were against me that day, so right, <laughs> let, we're about to let me win three in a row. Because I they was right, because I was right behind you in Kansas, and then and then you lost to that guy, Billy. Yeah, that dragon guy. I mean, he's a nice kid and girl. No, it's Billy, twice Billy, the ass. Let's get but, to the fucking point, my nigga. You were yeah, supposed to win, Billy. You wasn't supposed to lose. I mean, what it happened? happened. Tell us yeah. what happened. Oh, uh, against the dragon guy? Hell yeah! Yeah, my loss in round one in Kansas City. Uh, he opens up with Future Fusion playing Dragon, so he's already on to a good start. But I'm able to fight back, and I get to the point where he has um, some Dragon in hand. All he has is one card in hand. It's some Dragon that he revealed for Drago at the end phase. So he has Drago, Prime Material, and some Dragon in his hand. Not Dodger Dragon, just some random Dragon. I think it might have been a Light and Darkness Dragon. But I have Dandelion, Caius, and Solemn Warning. So I can set my Dandelion, set Solemn Warning, Warning whatever he summons, and then Caius him with my last token to clear his board, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I set Dandelion, set Solemn Morning, and then for his turn, he drew Dodger Dragon and summoned it. And do you know what that card does? It's that counter trap thing, right? It, it's a monster that can't be neg someone cannot be negated. Correct. I mean, so he like drew. Morning, I, I couldn't warning it. I couldn't warning it, so he killed all my tokens, and then I couldn't tribute for Caius, and then I lost. 
How did you feel walking away from that table? Like, I mean, did, did it you was frustrating because I felt like you know, I mean, it was the it, it, it sucks to lose round one, but I mean, I was just you know kept my head up and decided to keep playing. But the rest of the day didn't pan out the way I wanted to either. But I mean, it happens. I was glad the kid won. He wasn't able to get any more wins the rest of the YCS, but yeah, yeah but it's okay. I mean, but him going home beating to to an him going home beating you was a good accomplishment. Yeah, he posted a video on YouTube about it, so I'm, I'm, I'm glad he had a. I'm gonna it. find that link and post it below. <laughs> um, who besides saying yourself, who is like a player that you admire right now? Admire? Oh, there's a lot of like who who I think is really good. Yeah. And the, the current format, there's a lot of them that like I don't see people talking about enough. Uh, one especially is Robert Boyajian. I'm pretty sure I'm saying his last name right, Boyajian. Mm -hmm. I don't understand how people aren't talking about this kid. He wins. First of all, he had, he topped like Orlando with worms and shit like that. With right? worms, yeah. He's, people know him as the worm guy, the guy that uses Jeff Jones' deck, but his name is Robbie. But um, like he, he top he had like three tops just in a short period of time, and then he goes and wins YCS Indianapolis, and he hasn't not topped since he won. He's topped every single event since he won. And you think that he needs to be talked about more? Yeah, well, I guess he's topped four events in a row, including the one he won. And like also, I mean, there's still Alistair Albans who's tops nonstop. Um, uh, let's see, Frazier's done really well. He won Atlanta, and he's topped a whole bunch this year. Like, I mean, just, a lot of people aren't being talked about a lot. Like, but uh, more importantly, Robbie in particular. Just I don't hear anyone really talking about him. I don't know it's because his last name is hard to say, or. Oh. <laughs> but he's definitely one of the most. I don't know. I don't know if he's underrated because no one's saying anything bad about him either. But definitely not talked about enough. What is your most um, what is your most remembered experience in Yu-Gi-Oh? I'm, I mean, winning, besides winning in winning. Toronto. <laughs> besides winning, yeah, because um, I'm pretty sure, because I know when you and I played in New Jersey. Oh yeah, that that's definitely that was that's definitely up there. Explain uh, to you two what happened during that day when they said Billy Brake versus Jarrell Winston. Let's tell them. Yeah, uh, in the top eight of the biggest jump ever was uh, Edison. I had to play against. Drill Pro Winston, and um, it was one of the crazy. It was just crazy because he, you were using what, like Petco. Yeah, where the pets go? Gorilla biscuits, <laughs> early. Yeah, Lightshorn, and I was just using my Caliber Cat deck and sided into Skill Drain. And before game two, I flipped up a Skill Drain, and you just stood up and gave me a hug and said I won. And then that's, that's when I signed the, the match flip and said I will not go through the same pain as Jeff Jones put me <laughs> in the finals. And I and I didn't give you the win, but I just lost early. Yeah, it was just it was a. And um, I and I just wanted to get your opinion on something right now. Do you believe that it's wrong for people to like, like, like myself, to promote, to promote like themselves in a pro manner? To because I started saying pro Winston because I topped twice, and then I won and topped Jersey, and the the one of the biggest events of all time. Mm -hmm. And then I then I was just convinced that I was a good player, right? And I'm not saying that I'm good because I know Frazier's good beyond me. You're good, Robbie. All these great names, you know. Is there anything wrong with people trying to be like y'all? Um, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. You did it the right way, I think. Like it's one. I mean, you, it was it was like it's just you, Jarrell Pro Winston. It's a stick for you, and it's it works really well with you. But I mean, I think I don't think there's anything wrong with saying you're good. As long as you're not coming off to the point where you're talking down to other players, like you're saying, "Oh, I'm better than you," but it's one thing to say, "Oh, I'm I'm, I, I'm doing well at this game. I think I'm w a good player." But if you're saying, "Oh, I'm better than everyone else," like that's no one's gonna give you respect at that point. But all right, all right, because I was just in, in one of my later videos, I'm gonna call two pros, like two legends, you probably and somebody else, and I'm gonna <laughs> ask y'all these questions because. Besides me, there's other people that aspire to be pro, and we look up to y'all, but we need information. Not what y'all play, but we need information as to how to get better. So can you, like, start that off? You, you want to get that pro book? I saw yes. you talking about the other video. There's because, a book. Yeah, no, because listen, I, I swear when I was to in God. Toronto, Lazaro, yeah. Lazaro actually gave it to me. And then, oh, Lazaro so, gave you the pro book. And so then I won two ICSs, and then, then I had to pass it on. So. so who you pass it on to? Or, or can you not say it yet? I can't say. You'll have to find out. All right, all right. But <laughs> do you believe that there's a certain way that pros have to play? Um, there's not a way you have to play because there's definitely different play styles. Like there's, um, 
I think I have a unique kind of play, a different kind of play style than most players. Like I don't think there's a one right play in every single situation. There's multiple different things you can do. I think what you have to do it's not so much about making the right play, but making the play that puts yourself yourself in the best position possible to win the game. Like you may not have a good play in your hand, but you make the best play to the card you draw will help you out the most into the next turn. I understand. Yeah, you just have to make the right play to put yourself in the best position, even though it might not always seem like the right play. All right, all right. And um, do you believe that you can top without Maxi, Torgot, and Tangle? Just top 32 OICS right yes. now? Um, trying to think of a deck that you could use without Maxi, Torgot. I mean, yeah, it's definitely possible. No, no, no. Can you do it? Oh, because, can I? Yes, because I have inbox messages that saying you're nothing if plants are not allowed anymore. That's funny because I would get that all the time when like people were saying I couldn't do anything without X Sabers. But even when I started doing good with X Sabers, I already had tops on my belt with three different decks. Mm -hmm. I've topped with like ten different decks. I mean, yeah, I did get my wins with plants finally, but like I've gone through. I, I definitely. I mean, in this format, it's tough to top with anything without Maxi and Tour Guide because they're two, especially Maxi. They're two pivotal cards. When half the field is plants, you need the max C to stop. And it's the only card that can really stop plants, like just like that. So I mean, it's going to be tough in this format for anyone to top without max C. But and tour guys just an obviously broken card. But I mean, yeah. Once the new ban list comes up, I'm sure I'll have continued success. Just Courtney oh, says in his video that I did with him. I don't know if you saw that. that I watched um, part of it. He won prop mainly because of like effect Vela not being played thanks to you. Oh yeah, I saw that. That was interesting. I was, I mean, I know I only, I, I switched to three maxis and one Valor, but I saw a lot of people take Valor out of their deck completely, which I didn't agree with. But I mean, it worked for some people. But uh, I, look, I looked at his deck list, and I mean, I see how Valor does hurt his deck, but Max C seems like it would hurt it a little bit also. I mean, I'll be like, and, but apparently he doesn't care about Max C, he just pushes through it, and then they draw into their three Tengus. But <laughs> I'm not saying, sometimes there is a time to push through Max C, but. Um, yeah, I, I don't think I, I mean, I personally had any, if he played, if he played 15 copies of my plant deck, then maybe I would have had an impact on him winning, but, I mean, he probably played maybe seven or eight. All right, um, before I, I also played Dark Curry guys at Dark Hold, all their monsters. Oh, well, yeah, that's another video for another video. <laughs> Trust and believe, I'll be getting on that guy. But, um, <laughs> before I end this video, because we're probably breaking a 15 minute mark now, but that's all right, though. Explain ARG. And let me just oh. say something about this team real quick. Um, I remember in Dallas when he came up to me and started asking me about these good players and these pro players or whatever the case may be, and then asked me did I want to be on it or whatever. So I said, yeah, I don't mind. And then it was me, I think, Alex and Jeff on the like, <laughs> beginning skeleton. But then like everybody, like everybody, I had to back away for a little bit because like, I couldn't constantly do articles. But how do you feel about being on that team? Because I see that you're like, the articles you, you do – helps the community out. So sh show us the shirt real quick. Explain to us what it is. All right, and just give me like a good minute. Um, Ultra Reality Games, is a, they're, they're a local store that's based out of Ohio. And um, basically what the site is for, our article site, is just what you said to help the Yu-Gi-Oh community. And um, the owner of Ultra Reality, he, he had this, he's, a, he's just, it's brilliant. He's just one of the smartest guys, that, like business-wise, I think. And he's actually he's he's a, a good-hearted guy trying to give back to the community for this game that helps him you know you know uh, work. It's just his living is you know his store, and so now he's trying to give back to the community by taking the top players. He was he doesn't know anything about Yu-Gi-Oh, but he was able to find all the top players that are doing well. Go ahead. Oh yeah, doing well at the moment, and get us to write articles for him that to help the community. Now I and, have a question for you. If I if this video right now does well. On my channel. Can you come back and do a part two for me? Yeah, definitely. This is fun. All right. Thanks, YouTube. And for looking at Billy Break and Billy Break, um, what is your real name real quick? <laughs> oh, my birth name? Yes. Uh, William Break. I mean, it's just Billy's a nickname for William. I'm William. calling you William for now on. You already know. If it's <laughs> not pro, we got the go deuces. <laughs>